Finishing up the pole circle is pretty good because we've been in there for a solid, it was like five or six weeks. You know, coming in, you look forward to it, but once you get here, you kind of look forward to get out and do a little bit more stuff. So just getting out of the PC is kind of like another milestone that we get at this school. So it's really rewarding just to get out of the PC and know that you made it this far through all this struggle and all the time and effort that you put into it. It feels good getting out of the pole circle, more or less, just getting your hands on some work and doing something else then five weeks of just straight climbing up and down. Finishing up pole circles was good. Um, the up downs are a killer in the first couple of weeks, so getting out of the pole circle is definitely exciting. Winch down, winch down, winch down. On your left. Heartman Rescue is very important for the simple fact it's a, it's a learned skill that they will have to show proficiency in their entire career. The Hurtman is just to get you a general idea of how to get a guy off the pole uh, if something were to happen. It's good training because there's probably a lot of guys up there that never have gone through that. You never want to be in that situation, but it's always good to know about it. And uh, that way you can also <clears throat> help your fellow co-worker brother out and go get him when he's hurt. I mean, really, it's the, it's the one thing that we practice time and time. You know, our whole careers practice to be good at it, uh, to get up and help that injured guy, hoping that we never actually have to do it. The purpose of the tower is to really test your ability and your fear of heights. If you can make it up that tower, it takes a lot of endurance to make it up the tower and it really tests your fear of height. It's nerve wracking when you look at it really, but climbing up is probably the most tiring part. I mean, the height isn't that bad because you're so focused on where to put your feet and everything. But it's a whole different world than climbing a wood pole. I feel much better at climbing wood poles than I do a steel tower. It's a part of line work. They need to know what it feels like to be that high. It's a real decision maker for a lot of those guys. Once they get up there, they'll say, I love it, or I don't want to do this again. If you can get up there in a good amount of time and actually make it to the top, then you know that you can probably do anything else in this school. Leaving a pole circle, it's more getting down to doing the real work, the real line work. Uh, you're learning new things about the line. It's a transition everybody's waiting for, everybody's re uh, tired of doing up downs, and everybody's ready to get to work. So the majority of our training is working out on the line, and the reason why we do that, it, it's real simple. That's what they're gonna do when they leave here. You know, can they hit the ground running when they leave here as a student? So we try to train to a true thousand hour apprentice. Never done this before, never done anything like this, so learning what I'm gonna be doing in the field when I get to a job, this is what I'm gonna be doing. So it's. It's, good, it's fun, it's fun actually learning and doing every day what we're going to be doing to get a job. The more they can learn out here, and you're going to get more hands-on training outside. So therefore, a lot of guys, these guys seem to be, you know, that's what they want to do, more outside of work. You know, a lot of times they'll struggle building something, and the next time they've got it. So um, that's the thing there, the, again, is repetition. You know, the more they know how to do it, the better they will be. Well, when we get a job, I mean, we'll kind of know what's going on, and uh, we won't be totally in the blind. We're putting all them up, simulating as if we were putting up a like, new installation, putting up new power lines or power poles on the side of the road. We're simulating new installation. That's why we spend so much time. They work just like a real line crew works out in the real world. I mean, we do everything that a, a real life, real world line crew is gonna do with the exception of throwing the switch and making it hot because we do all our training dead and grounded. They're wanting a some kind of lineman school. I mean, this is, this school holds a lot of weight when these jobs say hey, you go to SLTC, the school holds that they hold you higher standards because you come from the school. A test where they want you to come in and they want to kind of see where you are and that'll help a lot of us instead of someone just, you know, coming in off the street. So with that, you know, they got to have the terminology, they got to have the specs, they got to have, you know, the know-how to join into a working line crew and not be the wrench that's thrown in the works, but be part of that well-greased machine. You know, for, for a couple of weeks, it's just like, you know, I tell the guys when they're here, it's kind of like a, an athlete from high school going to college. The speed's different. An athlete going from college to, you know, the NFL, so to speak, the speed is different. So they're still gonna kind of be that guy that's in the way for about a week or two, but their knowledge and skills that they learned here, once they learn the speed of how that crew works, you know, it's just a, a seamless movement that they go into the crew. Next time on 
down to the wire. I kind of woke him up to night class a little bit and I tell him bad storms coming through, storm cheatings coming through and they're going to they're going have a lot of work to do. If we walked up and you couldn't really see it, it was still kind of like light out and then you start getting closer and you're like, oh, what is going on over here? It was tough looking at that and it was like, ooh.